We're going to visit the past today, but be warned, it's not all happy smiles, so you might need a tissue. And then up to date to the present, where there are a lot of happy smiles. And of course, finally, the future. What will that bring? But first... Hello, I'm Marion. I'm a happy, home-loving introvert with a background in textiles and embroidery. I live in a cottage on a farm near a beach on the east coast of Scotland and I wouldn't live anywhere else. I now spend my days creating patterns for crochet blankets in very simple, straightforward stitches but with intricate and beautiful colours. This channel is a mix of vlogs about my life and tutorials to accompany the patterns. If this type of thing interests you, please like and subscribe. It really does help and I hope you enjoy the video that's coming up. So now I've tempted you with some old photos from my family album. And of course, we're going to start with talking about the past. But I'm going to do something just a little different with this video. And that's out of necessity, really, because I have got a project. It's a personal project of a blanket that I have got to make and finish by next week. So I am going to, if you don't mind, I'm going to sit and crochet while I'm talking to you. So I'm going to move the camera around and you can see my hands. You don't need to see my face all the time anyway. So while we're talking about the past, the present and the future, I'll be working away on this. I'm not going to be explaining what I'm doing. I'm just going to work on it and you'll see it up close anyway. This isn't going to be a pattern and I'll talk more about it in the present part of the video. This isn't going to be a written pattern, but um, you know, you'll probably get some ideas from it by watching this video. So let's go. I'm working on granny squares at the moment and I'm not 100% sure if this video is actually going to work because talking to you and crocheting at the same time might be too much for my old brain to cope with. Thinking of two things at once, I mean. But um, let's see if I can tell you the story of the past while I'm crocheting. So I'm going back eight years and eight years ago was uh, an important date in our family calendar because on the 15th of October, eight years ago, so we're just past the anniversary, my sister and I said goodbye to our dear mum who passed away at the age of 90. Now, she had been ill for a short time and it hadn't been a nice few months for her. It had been painful and upsetting. So when it, when the time actually came, I think everybody felt that it was the right thing for her. She was ready to go. So why am I telling you this now? Because eight years ago, we lost mum and eight years ago, I started my crochet journey. And that's the whole point of this past, present and future. Mum was called Jessie Clark and she was born in 1926 in Glasgow. And she grew up uh, as a teenager through the war. She actually left school when she was 14 in order to join the fire service during the war. And that was a shame because she was a very bright and intelligent girl who could very easily have gone on to further education, university or something, but that didn't happen. She joined the fire service and worked through the war and that meant we're talking 14 years old. And then she got a job in an office in Glasgow as a typist. But that was where she met my father, so that was good. He was just back from the war. He'd spent six years in Egypt and was back and back in the office and he met this really good looking young typist who happened to be the fastest uh, shorthand typist in the office. 
and they got married at the beginning of the 1950s and I came along 18 months later and my sister uh, was four years after that and we were a happy little family. Mum was the kind of woman who in the 1950s when they got married they left their jobs and became full-time housewives and homemakers and mothers and that was mum just followed the trend and she had, did a very good job at that. She was an excellent baker. The tins were always full of cakes and biscuits that she'd baked and she was an excellent cook as well. Uh, she held parties and dinner parties for my father's work friends and their wives and she was the perfect hostess although she I think she I think secretly she absolutely hated it because she was as much of an introvert as I am I'm sure but she kept an absolutely beautifully clean and tidy home it was com comforting and welcoming to visitors and she made clothes for us and knitted and she did embroidery and lots of other crafts as well. So she kept herself really busy as we were growing up. And I think a lot of that rubbed off on me. My love of textiles and embroidery came from my mother. So I've got that to thank her for to start with. Uh, let's go forward a bit. I want to add a little bit of me into this. And I went off to art college with uh, a desire to, to do graphic design actually but it was textile design and embroidery that uh, that uh, wooed me at art college and that's what I did. So we're going to be talking a little bit about the past in as much as how I came to become a crochet designer. So there's a start. I was at art college and I was studying textile design and embroidery with a huge interest in colour and what colour did with um, against each other, that kind of thing. So there was a good grounding there. And then I left college and became an art teacher uh, for a few years until I had my own family. Um, and I taught art in secondary schools and I also had a part-time tutoring post at the art college and then I also had evening classes which I built up uh, to maybe I think it was four a week and some during the day and I taught embroidery to adults for 25 years. So I had a good grounding in education. I could teach and I think I was quite a, quite a good teacher. So I could do that. I, th I really feel as if I had a bit of a talent for teaching. That's where maybe the patterns come into it. So colour, te textiles and teaching. And also I had a mum who was 100% supportive and behind me. And she just loved watching what I was doing. She came along to all the private views of the exhibitions. I was a member of a a couple of embroidery groups which were linked to the art college and we had exhibitions and she came along to them all. She was very supportive. I started a business in 1989, which I've talked about already on here. And that kind of put paid to all my uh, personal creative projects. Everything was geared to the business. And I thought, right, when I retire, I will go back to doing embroidery. Not for one single second did I think I would be doing crochet. <laughs> that was not on my um, agenda at all. I had very, very reluctantly learned how to make granny squares when I was a teenager. Mum showed me, but it wasn't my thing at all. So let's fast forward um, to the point where uh, mum was in her late 80s. Dad had passed away um, when, oh, 20 years before and she had had a, a good life on her own. She liked to uh, make things and do, do embroidery. She did the most intricate, beautiful cross-stitch 
embroideries, I would buy her an embroidery kit and I would look for the most complicated design that I could find for her because she loved something that would really challenge her. And she did loads of beautiful pictures. But as she was going through her 80s, I noticed that she was slowing down. Well, everybody does, I'm sure, in their 80s. But mum, she was missing her crochet, her embroidery, but she couldn't do it. She'd given up the knitting a long time before. She said it was because it um, affected her shoulders and she couldn't hold the knitting needles. But she still embroidered, but then it, it as well came to an end. And it was really sad to see this person just sitting. I would go down and of an afternoon and spend the afternoon with her and she would just be sitting watching rubbish on TV with nothing in her hands. And it was so unlike mum to have nothing in her hands to be working on. So one Mother's Day, I was thinking about something that I could buy her for Mother's Day, something a little bit different. And it occurred to me that maybe just maybe if I was to buy her a crochet hook and some yarn, I didn't call it yarn in those days, I called it wool, a crochet hook and some wool, she might be able to do a little bit of crochet because I felt, well, the hook is so small, it might be something that she could handle quite easily. So I had no idea what I was looking for. I took myself off to a local wool shop and walked in and said, could I buy a ball of wool, please? <laughs> um, and I came out with a ball of very sugary pink acrylic yarn and a crochet hook that the uh, shop shopkeeper had recommended to go with that ball of yarn. And I had it in my head that I might suggest that she made a little blanket for my granddaughter's or her great granddaughter's doll's cot, something small and easy. And I also went away and bought one of these crochet magazines that had a variety of stitch uh, diagrams in it as well, just in case she couldn't remember, because I certainly wasn't going to be able to teach her. So I gave her that. And, you know, it kind of, it was so sad because when she opened her little package, I saw this, oh, this fleeting look of fear crossed her face. And I knew exactly what she was thinking in that moment. She was fearful that I had given her something that she wasn't going to be able to do and that I, it would disappoint me. She didn't want the one thing she would not want to do would be to disappoint me having given her that. But she just thought, oh, no, I can't do this. And I kind of instinctively knew not to force it. So the crochet hook and the ball of the wool were put carefully on the table beside her chair. And they sat there for two weeks and I came in every day to see her and they hadn't been touched. So I thought, well, I'm not going to say anything at all. And then the next day I came in and they weren't there. They had, she had put them away. So that was sad, but I thought, well, you know, I've tried and it's, I don't want to upset her if she thinks that she can't do it. And it was not long after that that she fell and broke her hip, which was very sad. And it started a decline of her physical and mental health. And six months later, she passed away. So after the funeral, it was the job for my sister and I to clear her house and get it ready for selling and to get to, you know, to to decide what to do with all the stuff that was left in the house. And one day we were busy doing that and I opened the one of the drawers of her chest of drawers in her bedroom and there was the ball of pink wool and the crochet hook. But she had started something. She had tried, probably unsuccessfully, to do a granny square and I could see that even with by my um, 
sort of untrained eye for crochet that it was something that had frustrated her. It was probably the first two rounds of a granny square, but that were she hadn't been able to see properly to count the stitches. They were lopsided and the, the tension was off and it really wasn't a piece of mum's work at all. And my heart just broke in that minute when I saw the, that she had tried so hard to do something for me and had failed. And I know how badly she would have felt about that. So it really had an effect on me. And I took the ball of wool and the crochet hook home with me and the magazine. <laughs> and I decided that I would make a blanket for my granddaughter in memory of her great grandmother. So it was funny because I had um, been spending, I was still working at that time, still running the business, uh, but I had been spending every afternoon with mum, sometimes into the evening as well. And so I'd had to make the business work around the afternoon that I spent with mum. So once mum died, the business was running itself, but I still had these afternoons where I didn't have um, anything to do. So I thought, right, I'll do some crochet. And <laughs> I don't know whether I've got a photo. I'll see if I can find a photo of that um, baby blanket that I made, the baby doll blanket, because it was just awful. I think every single uh, beginner's crochet mistake that I could make, I made. It was just rows of, I don't know, I can't remember whether it was treble or double crochet, but of course I managed to make the sides totally uneven and they sloped in. Um, there were lots of dropped stitches, so there were big holes here and there. And um, oh, it was just awful. And then I had the the, <laughs> the idea to make a white lacy crochet border going round the edge, which was like 10 steps ahead of anything I was capable of doing. And this lacy border just immediately started to fall apart when I made it. But I think my granddaughter liked it. But something happened and I'm sure many of you will relate to this. In fact, I'm sure you've all got crochet stories as well of how you started. And I'm sure many of you will have a mother or grandmother or an aunt who have been the catalyst for you starting to crochet. And I'd love to hear your stories in the comments. But something happened and I got hooked, as they say. And I don't know why, but it, and I'm not a spiritual person, but it felt as though my mother was there every time I picked up a crochet hook. I could have conversations with her in my head and I knew it felt as if she was watching me. And, and you know, the, the rational side of me would say, yeah, that's just silly, that's fanciful, that's just wishful thinking. And yeah, I, I agree. But at the same time, it was nice to allow myself to think that my mum was watching. And, and really, I kind of hope she is because it's so sad to think that this eight years of my life, which have been incredible, and the uh, number of people all over the world who are now making my blankets from my crochet patterns, if she'd known, if mum had, had any inkling of that, if she'd known about that, she would have been over the moon. And to think that all that started just a few days after we had laid her to rest, it's um, the most amazing thought. So that's my past. And in the eight years since mum died, I've made... Did, I did count the number of blankets I made and it was quite ridiculous. But I haven't followed patterns. I have, I've bought loads and loads of patterns. 
and I've downloaded free ones and I've got a, crochet, a wall of crochet books, but I don't ever follow anybody else's pattern. And I think that was probably my background of being a designer and wanting to do my own thing. So immediately after that baby blanket, baby doll blanket, I made a full sized single bed crochet blanket for my granddaughter and it was made up. The pattern was was not something I followed. And then I made one for my grandson. And after that, everything just snowballed. So that is the story of my crochet past and my mum. I'm moving on with my blanket now and we have reached the present. And the present is really just a video diary of what has been happening since the last vlog that I put up on YouTube. So yeah, it's been about three weeks, I think, since we came back from Blair Athol. And it's been quite busy. I've um, been working on this blanket and I've also finished off and gifted a baby blanket. I think I, did I mention it in the last video? I'll certainly put some photos up of it. So uh, we had this baby arriving in the family, Theo. He decided to be a slow coach and he was a couple of weeks late. <laughs> but he arrived last week, Theo Jesse, and he's got his baby blanket that I made him. And this project that I'm working on just now is another personal project. So I can't really say too much about it. I'm Well, I am going to say too much about it. And I just hope that the people it's for won't watch this video. If they do, they're not going to get a surprise next week. But this is for my sister's other child. She it was his, her daughter who had Theo. And her son, John, got engaged to his girlfriend in the summertime, Adrian. And this blanket is for his engagement present. He's having a party next, mm, gosh, when I think about it now, it's just a weekend, a couple of days away. So we're, my plan is to, not I'm talking and not thinking what I'm doing here. My plan is to have the blanket finished to give to him at the party. <laughs> Let's see. This is not going to be a pattern. Don't try to persuade me. What I will do is I will make a note of all the yarn colours I've used and link them below so that at least you'll have a colour palette to work with and you could do something of your own. And as you can see, it's really just granny squares. So we've got granny squares in the centre. We've got plain granny squares going round. There's uh, rows of granny stripes with this um, single crochet, double crochet, single crochet in, in US terms, double crochet in UK terms, in between the stripes, which is something I've used quite a lot. Um, and then round of granny squares on the outside of that. And what happens after that, I'm not sure, because I'm really just making it up as I go along. And why have I chosen this particular colour palette? Well, I'll put it up. I don't, I've got a, a photo here. My sister sent me a photo of um, her son's living room. And this is the colour scheme of their living room. So I thought I would do it to match. I will uh, show you a full picture of, of what the blanket looks like in just a minute. So I hope John and Adrian like it. Right, let's go on. So what else have I been doing this uh, past three weeks? There's been a lot of family stuff. Um, we've had the older grandkids were off school and they were away for the first week of, they've been off school for two weeks for the October holidays and they were away for the first week. When they came back, they had another week. So we had our granddaughter staying over on uh, one of the nights and we did a bit of a Halloween display. I know it was a little bit early, <clears throat> but I did go over the top a little bit with my pumpkins this year. 
And so the Halloween display is mainly on the dresser in the kitchen. And Leela helped me to get that organised. We've got pumpkins with tea lights in and we've got velvet pumpkins and there's also the crochet pumpkins. I didn't do any new ones this year, but I have a collection from previous years and I've got that little pumpkin garland that's hanging at the top. So that's all gone up and Leela added to the effect by her dramatic lighting. <laughs> that was the evening that she came to stay. And then after that, we watched The Nightmare Before Christmas on the kitchen projector. So that was all very good. The next day after that, she and I took the train over to Edinburgh to visit my son and his, his wife. Um, because they're the ones with the twins who are six months old now, believe it or not. And we took the little crochet jackets that I had made for the twins. And, do you know, these jackets have been on the go since virtually they were born. And I've added to them. Every time I've seen the babies, I've thought, oh, no, they're not going to fit. So I've added extra rounds to them before I finished it. And I I think, I don't know, I, I don't know whether I was a bit wavered with the sizing, but really, <laughs> they're not going to get a lot of wear out of these little jackets. I think these twins are growing faster than my jackets could. But they look cute in them and they'll be fine for the colder days when they're out walking in their prams. Leila and I took the babies out for a walk to let their mum and dad have a bit of a break and it was blowing an absolute hurricane but um, we managed. <laughs> there weren't any disasters and even as, as you noticed, some of you might notice that there was a, a booty missing in the photo but we did manage to find it. So that was kind of last week. What else have I been doing? Not so much really. I've, oh yes, the Stylecraft, of course. Uh, Stylecraft Special had their big event where they had sent out these secretive white boxes to uh, various people, myself included, with some of the new, 20 new colours of Stylecraft Special that they are introducing and they have, already have. It's in Wool Warehouse. And we were um, all asked if we would do a kind of um, video for social media where we did one that, that sort of talked a little bit about this big secret and then another video two days later where we unboxed the big secret and explained what it was. And everybody did amazing little videos. I don't know, mine wasn't was okay, but nothing special. But... Uh, Boy, that took me ages. I think it took me a whole day to figure out what to do for these two little videos. So that was another day used up. And I have um, ordered and received the yarn pegs of all 20 new colours. And they're very pretty new colours. Um, I don't know whether they, they suit me 100%. Some of the colours are beautiful, but... Uh, and I, I would certainly use them. And of course, if you know me, the colour mushy peas will fit right into my uh, colour palette without a doubt. But some of and some of the other colours are not ones I would probably use much, but they are nice. They are pretty, and I've got my yarn pegs into you know inserted into the full range now. So there are a hundred and twenty colours of Stylecraft Special and there are 120 colours of um, Yarnsmith's Create. I think I'm still more inclined to work with the Yarnsmith's Create and that's what mainly what these colours are in the blanket. I think they just fit with my sense of colour, I think. So that is what's been happening in the present. Have I missed anything? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that's everything for the present. It's not ex particularly exciting this past three weeks, but uh, once I get this blanket finished, there will be new projects on the go, which neatly takes me 
to the future. So, the future, what will that bring? Well, I'm not going to look too far ahead because at this advanced age, I don't particularly like looking too far ahead. So I'm looking more towards 2025 and I've been giving it some thought because I think part of the problem, if there's a problem with my little uh, crochet business, is that I don't plan ahead. And I know that one of the things I do that's wrong is that when I start a new project, I am just so tempted to share it with people that as I'm working on a new project, everything goes on to social media, onto Instagram and Facebook, and I start blurting out what it is that I'm doing. So much so that then I get a lot of people contacting me and saying, oh, you're doing a, pat a new pattern. When will it be ready? Can't wait. I'm going to stop um, everything else and wait for you to produce this pattern. Oh boy, the responsibility that that brings. So I th then I find myself finishing, you know, working to finish off the blanket design and then totally, stupidly giving myself intensive days of pattern writing to the point that it affects my health. Uh, it's usually my eyes that get it. I'm working at the computer maybe for such long hours, which is totally unhealthy, you know, without a break, without getting up and wandering around. And I end up with these migraines, these ocular migraines, um, and all sorts of stuff like that. And I, I, I do far too late nights. I've got to remember, I'm not a young person. So I need to really plan. And with that in mind, I was thinking that for 2025, I'm going to see that I will do three new blanket designs. And I think what I'll try to do is bring one out in January. With the thought behind that, of, I've got my Christmas blanket done for 2024. So if anybody is wanting to make anything for Christmas, they've got that. But I think January is quite a good time when people, when the um, all the flurry of Christmas and the busyness of Christmas is past, and then it's the dark winter nights, especially in this hemisphere anyway. I think January is quite good to bring out a new blanket design. So I think I'll aim for that with a new design, and then I'll bring one out in the summer, and then I'll do a Christmas one. And I think three should be enough for me, if I'm being realistic. And I've also got ideas to revisit some of my old designs, my old patterns, and redo them in new colourways. And that's actually quite exciting in my head at the moment. I, I, I think I could do something quite special with that. So that might fit in between the three new designs. Who's to say? This might not happen. It might. I might do four new designs. I might do two. But that's to have a, a kind of plan almost written down where I'm going to be doing three. I think that's going to make life a bit more um, settled for me. And what I might do this time is not tempt you with works in progress <laughs> because it becomes too much of a of a push to try and get it done quickly. I have got embroidery as well that I need to be thinking about because I've also been asked by a lot of people if I would do an embroidery pattern for you know you know the, the embroideries that I've done where I've taken uh, the granny square idea from my crochet and reproduced it as an embroidery, as a canvas work piece. And I've had a lot of people asking if I would do that. I don't know how easy that will be to do because I have never done it before. But, and they, they do say, they, you can't teach old dogs new tricks. Maybe I can prove them wrong. But I might have a go at doing, even if it's just a little uh, 
chart or something for a small type of embroidery. I'll see about that. That's another thing. Uh, I think that's probably going to be enough, isn't it? What with babies and preteens and uh, all the other bits and pieces. Oh, yeah. One last thing for next year. Um, we've got a brand new garden room, which has just been finished and it's completely empty at the moment. Um, it's going to be a games room. That's the decision. We're going to put um, a snooker pool table, that kind of thing in for everybody, you know, all the grandkids to play. But I'm also thinking that it's going to be a possible venue if I was to take part in our local open studios weekend. Now, the, you know, Fife is really good for um, different parts of Fife, different times of the year, have weekends where artists and craftspeople throw open the doors of their studios for the weekend and people can do a trail and walk and go around and visit them all. So I kind of thought, being the show off that I am, that I could maybe do something with my crochet and embroidery and have this garden room open to the public. So there's another project for 2025 and we'll see what, what happens there. Right, that's past, present and future taken care of. So I will continue with this blanket. I'll show you it at the end of the video here. I'll lay it out and take a photo of it and then I'll see you at the next in the next video. So bye.